but if you make it taste good, you know. Like. Peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are doing an independent lecture and this is based on something I learned today that I wanted to share. Uh, I was listening to a video on the principle of Ahimsa, which is uh, a Sanskrit word which, which uh, means basically um, the, the, the concept means do no harm and this is a a big part of of Hindu Jainism and Buddhism which is uh, the three major religions in that region and um, I knew this concept was, was true already but I did learn something new from the Holy Ghost uh, concerning a, a comparison to an early Israelite uh, concept. Now you might have heard of the Hamsa, which is which is the Arabic word, or in Hebrew it's Chemesh. And the number relates to five, and it relates to this, this symbol here. Now, the when you when you look when you look up the the concept of ahimsa, uh, the image associated with the ahimsa is is a hand with a circle uh, in the palm and the um, and written uh, in the middle of the circle is the the Sanskrit word ahimsa and the, the wheel of course represents uh, the wheel of reincarnation uh, we're not going to talk about that, but uh, this the, the when I when I saw the hand, the the Holy Ghost brought back to mind uh, the 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 ancient Hebrew chemsa uh, or chemesh. The the Hebrews and Arabs believe that this symbol is meant to ward off evil. But from what I learned today, the the Holy Ghost basically told me that this uh, Hebrew uh, and Arab Chimsa is related to the the Indian practice of Ahimsa and that the Indians actually maintained a, a more original interpretation of uh, this principle. One thing that is common in, among Hebrew is the the hand with uh, the writing chai um, in it which is Hebrew for life and they all have this eye that's in the center you probably can't see that from here but um, this eye is kind of small but as you can see you see all the other stuff doesn't matter but we see the eye and the chai now uh, the Holy Ghost told me that the hand itself represents that all uh, uh, all life is held in the hand uh, by God, and that the uh, the, re the reason for the eye is that uh, uh, we are to see uh, all life as God sees all life, and the five fingers uh, represent five principles. The first is, do no harm to yourself. The second is, do no harm to your home, which means your family. Uh, third is, do no harm to your neighbors. Uh, four, do no harm to 
lower life forms. F5 do no harm to the earth. Now these are, these uh, by by striving to 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 live by these five principles, you will f uh, eject yourself so much higher in uh, being able to understand and come closer to God. The first principle is do no harm to yourself. Um, this is this is talking about. Uh, your moral standing. Don't don't uh, destroy your virtue, or don't destroy your physical body by putting bad foods into it. Um, be be righteous and good to yourself. And um, the second principle is do no harm to home. That of course that uh, is uh, talking about um, instead of being a bad influence in your home. Um, we're supposed to be a good influence in the home, and that each member of the family has a, a certain role to play in, a, in, in God's idea. Now, do no harm is, is not talking about discipline. If you have a child that needs to be disciplined, then uh, you discipline them. If they need, a, if they, if, if if your son is a type of a boy that needs a good spanking. Uh, then certainly do so. That that's not what do no harm is talking about. In fact, it would do more harm to not discipline um, appropriately. And of course, there's there is such stuff as excessive discipline, which is which is falls under the concept of harm. But uh, it's it's all a balance. Um, do no harm to your neighbor. Um, just like we love ourselves, we should love our neighbors and not seek to do anything that would bring them harm. Now, uh, again, this, does, this concept of do no harm is not, is, is, is not talking about being a pacifist. Um, the principle of do no harm does not mean that you have to uh, sacrifice your life and let somebody kill you. Uh, this includes in wars and all forms of self-defense against criminal activity. Uh, in fact, um, the the as 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 I as I study the principle of ahimsa in um, in Hindu Jainism and Buddhism, um, I notice that the the exact, pretty much very similar concepts of how uh, God commanded uh, Israelites and um, in, the, in the scriptures and the additional advice that God gave us in the Doctrine and Covenants is very, is, is very similar to that. In that, uh, first we should attempt to create a peaceful dialogue and then if, if all that fails uh, we should only be doing wars of self-defense, and, um, and and so I, I noticed that it was very similar to that principle. <clears throat> uh, do no harm to lower beings. Uh, this means basically that we should have a we should value the life of animals and plants. Now. Of course, this does not mean that we should like like you have to un uh, understand that um, we should avoid eating animal life. Uh, but if our life is in danger, and and like like there's a famine, and uh, the only thing we can eat is animal, uh, then certainly do so. It is okay to eat animals to save your life. That is what the it says in the book of Genesis in the Joseph Smith translation. But the, the, the concept of do no harm is that sh we should avoid as much as possible uh, taking uh, animal life. And in fact, uh, this, this concept of do no harm is a, uh, it, it comes back on us. And for instance, there's a lot of health problems associated with o overconsumption of meat. And so we see that 
we are harming ourselves by uh, destroying life and animal for food. Of course, this, uh, causing no harm to animals doesn't mean that we can doesn't mean that uh, we can use animals as we need to use them in any situation. But it, it's just a, a reminder to try to uh, have as much mercy on animal kind as, as we can. And then finally, the fifth principle is do no harm to the earth. Now this is not talking about uh, the modern globalist understanding, which is designed to destroy mankind. Uh, but uh, for instance, uh, the earth wants us to use it to create shelters and homes and cities and um, to use anything in the earth that we need to use. Now, that being said, is it necessary to dump toxic waste into waterways? No, that's harming the earth unnecessarily. Um, is it okay to build roads and to build all these houses? Yeah, that's fine. But is it necessary to to poison the earth using chemicals so that nothing will grow uh, underneath uh, those structures. Um, I think we would be better off with less of a construction of a, of a pavement and stuff like that and to, and to leave the earth in a state in which it is more easier to grow food out of um, by, 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 by uh, poisoning the earth underneath stuff like that it, it, uh, <clears throat> it takes a long time to fix it and even then we're not even sure it destroys microbes and stuff and uh, that, stuff like that that's that's what we're talking about and it's causing no harm to the earth um, but um, the concept of causing harm to the earth does not mean the, that we <clears throat> that we're not allowed to use anything in the earth uh, that we feel that we need to use. It's all about a balance of wisdom and understanding if uh, this is something that would cause problems later on. And um, not only the, the the land itself, but for our future generations. And so this is what the, the Holy Ghost taught me this day uh, about that. And uh, the, the reason why the Hebrews write the word chai in the, uh, here we go. Oh, there it is. And the reason why the Hebrews write the word chai is, is that chai means life or all life. And so we need to to try to, to learn as, as God has learned uh, about the balance between all these things. Um, that God holds all life in his hands and he wants us to learn how to do that as well. And God uh, avoids causing as much harm as possible. Um, and, but he allows us to have our free agency. And so, if, as we learn to use that free agency to not cause harm to others, then we will be more like God. And uh, the, the reason why we list them as one through five is that, uh, that the, the, one, the, the, high, the, the lower the number one, the first thing is uh, it takes more precedent over the second, and likewise. And so, uh, if we, if we, for instance, if we come to accept the gospel, but our family reje uh, rejects us for it, um, it is better to keep keep the gospel than to reject it in order to um, spare the feelings of your family. Um, it's good to to do good to your neighbor, but we have to protect ourselves if they try to uh, do something wrong. And yeah, just just stuff like that. And uh, so that is uh, today's uh, independent lecture. I'll leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Burger King, get your burgers worth.